So when did Alexander meet Hephaestion? Uh, they probably always knew one another and they grew up together, uh, but the earliest statement in any source uh, which puts them together is in the apocryphal Alexander romance, where they're stated to have visited the Olympic Games together when Alexander was 15. The earliest mention in any of the reliable sources is the context of the visit to Troy just after the start of the Persian expedition uh, when Alexander was 21. Is it true that they studied together under Aristotle? Uh, certainly Curtius says that they were educated together and it's undoubtedly the case that Aristotle was uh, Alexander's tutor. Um, the strongest evidence in favour, though, comes from Diogenes Laertius, who lists a book of letters written to Hephaestion among the works of Aristotle. What went on at Troy? Uh, Alexander and Hephaestion honoured the graves of Achilles and Patrocles, the heroes of Homer's Iliad. Uh, Ale Alexander saw himself as the new Achilles, so naturally Hephaestion was seen as the new Patrocles. Do we know what Hephaestion looked like? We have some idea. Uh, he's said to have been the same age as Alexander, but taller and more handsome. Uh, there are also a dozen or so surviving images which may be of Hephaestion. Uh, the only one that's named is this votive relief found at Thessaloniki in Macedon. Uh, it shows Hephaestion uh, holding out a bowl for a libation from this woman. Uh, it's actually inscribed along the bottom, uh, from Diogenes to the hero Hephaestion. Apart from that, we rely on images that are in some way associated with images of Alexander. For example, this head, uh, thought to be from Megara and now in the Getty Museum, was found together with a head which is fairly obviously a youthful Alexander. Uh, then there's the so-called Alexander sarcophagus found in Sidon, probably actually the sarcophagus of a king called Abdelonymus. Um, at the centre of the long battle scene on one side there's a figure that might be Hephaestion. Again, there's an association with a figure that's definitely Alexander at this end because he's wearing a lion skin helmet uh, in emulation of his ancestor Heracles. Uh, then again, there's this pair of sculptures from Egypt, probably from Alexandria. They're the Demetrio statuettes. And this, again, is fairly obviously an image of Alexander. So this is believed to be an Hephaestion that was found together with it. Um, interestingly, coming back to Pella, this mosaic was found there. This figure has characteristic anastole, uplift of the hair from the brow, which is characteristic of images of Alexander, and given the, given the context, it might well be him. Uh, this figure here is wielding a double-headed axe. Now, a double-headed axe is an attribute of the god Hephaestos, the god of fire, for whom Hephaestion was named. So that would naturally tend to be thought of as an image of Hephaestion in that context. Finally, also interestingly, we have a mural that was on the facade of the tomb of uh, Philip II at Aigai. And in this mural, these are outlined, this is the original mural here, these are outlines just below, on, uh, showing the figures more clearly. This figure here, again, is wielding a double-headed axe. And so again, in the context of this figure at the centre being Alexander, that might well be a representation of Hephaestion. What was Hephaestion's role in Alexander's campaigns? Well, some scholars think that he was gradually promoted up the ranks of the army, uh, but there's actually no evidence for that in the sources, and I think it's probably nonsense. Uh, more likely, what happened is that Alexander appointed him as one of his elite bodyguards, one of his seven elite bodyguards at the outset of the reign. The seven elite bodyguards were the most senior courtiers, the highest nobles in the Macedonian court. Uh, in the context of that role, Hephaestion seems to have performed various important missions. For example, he led Alexander's entire f fleet on its journey down the Levantine coast, and a little later he seems to have been instrumental in negotiations with Demosthenes in Athens to keep Athens from supporting a rebellion led by Sparta. At the Battle of Galgamela, 
Diodorus explicitly states that Hephaestion was the commander of Alexander's elite bodyguard. Sounds like he'd become very important. Yeah, he was more or less Alexander's right-hand man. Just after Galgamela, probably, he's appointed Kiliarch. Uh, Kiliarch is a Persian role. Uh, it's something like our prime minister. Uh, then again, a couple of years later again, he became commander of the Companion Cavalry, uh, the most important brigade in Alexander's army. The combination of these ranks made him Alexander's clear deputy. Uh, an interesting anecdote from near the end of the reign is that one of Alexander's governors wrote a letter saying that he feared Alexander and Hephaestion. It suggests that they've come to be seen as a bit of a double act on the political stage. Is it true that they also had a romantic relationship? It's very likely. Uh, Aelian explicitly states that they were lovers. Curtius cracks jokes about it. Even the reticent Arian although in the obscure context of his letters of Epictetus, discourses of Epictetus, uh, he says that Hephaestion was Alexander's lover as well, so there's little reason to doubt it. Where can I find out more about Hephaestion? Uh, you can see much more, read much more in my book, Alexander's Lovers, uh, and there's more information on my website, www.alexanderslovers.com. Thank you.